Hi guys, Richard from Forsyth here, and as soon as I finish up a little bit of fret work on this beautiful Ibanez Talman base, I'll show you what we're actually doing today. Ta-da! Perfect. Wait, no. This, this, this is something else. This is something else. Okay, my friends, here's what we're really working with today. This is a Crate GX130C 2x12, and it was given to me by a friend, and it was so messed up. I mean, literally jacks are just falling out of it it doesn't work it's got all kinds of problems so the chassis i'll keep for parts which i've already started stealing parts for other amps off of this but uh, i thought it'd be kind of cool to turn this into a little 2x12 cab so obviously we have to fill this area here and let me turn it around and i'll show you what's on the back so the easiest thing would be to not have any kind of back at all on it just leave it open which is you know how this amp was working originally. But the speakers I wanna put in here, I'm gonna take these crates out, which are, I believe, Eminence G1s or G3, something like that. Anyway, designed for crate. I'm gonna take those out and I'm going to put in some vintage Alnico uh, organ speakers like from the 60s that I ended up getting a long time ago and never got to use. But anyway, we're gonna put those in here. And because those won't handle the bass that these guys will, I think it'd be better to close this back in so that the speakers can't, you know, excurse themselves too far out the front. So obviously we need to frame the inside of this out to accept our back plate, and then we need to make our back plate, and we're going to Tolex that back plate. And that strip, which coconut is kind of hanging out behind, I actually have some really nice maple that we're going to stain blue. Okay, so here is the maple we're using. This is actually a scrap cut off because I knew it was going to take me a few days to a few weeks, depending on how smooth I wanted to go. I went ahead and made this a while ago. But anyway, let me show you exactly how we did it. And then I'll show you what it looks like. So I wanted it to be kind of a dark blue. So, you know, blue and black feel on the cab. This is literally just food coloring I got from the dollar store. That's all it is. You will need a special application tool. It's, it's you know, a paper towel. Take the food coloring, a few drops, and then just go on there. And you just keep going until you get a color you like. So this is blue, but you can tell it's got a little green in there. And I like that a lot, so I did one like this. This is our insert. I like things to be perfectly smooth, and I started doing that. This is after a few days of sanding and leveling, and then I was like, you know what, that's enough. We'll just <laughs> go one more coat of lacquer, and then we'll call it good. So I'm not going so super smooth on it, but it still looks pretty nice, flame blue insert. You can see how it kind of starts and where it, where it finishes. Coconut is helping so much. I can't do it without him. Look <laughs> at his tail, buddy. You know, I leave the room for 10 minutes. Come on, man. All right, so I cut my cleats out of uh, some pine I had left over from a project in the house. Works just fine. Basically, um, and also cut them pretty tight so that I can just sort of press fit them in there. Don't worry, coconut's not scared of anything. Basically, the depth we need this at is the width of this plus enough room for some Tolex. So just a little bit more, that's a little far, I'll bring that back some. That should do it. Let's bring this back up a little bit.
And I'd rather it be just inside the back, be just recessed than have it sticking out any. But I think that's about where we need to be, so let me drill some holes. Quick trip to the hardware store. I got some satisfactory screws. Little brass ones less likely to rust on me. Not that I'm planning on having it in a damp environment, but you never know. Yep, better break out the uh, big screw gun. Well, this little thing is uh, <laughs> working its butt off. It's hyper tough, you know. So what I did, made them a little bit longer on the end here so that I only had to line up the top here and then I could just pull this up and it would rest against the already part of the baffle that exists there. Now I'm just pre-drilling. I'll just continue to work my way around just like this. Pretty simple, guys. All right, we got a good solid mounting service for the back baffle here. No, I'm calling it baffle for the back of the cab. So now I have to go cut that. I'm sure you guys know what cutting wood sounds and looks like, so I'll be right back. Okay, moment of truth. I have not tried to check this fit yet. Let's see. Let's see if uh, our board fits like it should. Not mad at that. I'm gonna have to trim a little bit on the edges just so it fits in nice and smooth. That's not too bad. I think we'll get some Tolex on it. That might sit just right. Before we figure out our Tolex situation, I got this uh, from Seismic Audio. This is just the jack plates that uh, will hold two jacks because eventually I would like it to be able to run parallel to another cab. So, we need to figure out exactly where to put it. Since this is fairly homebrew what I'm doing today, uh, I'm not going to be too worried about how exact it is in the middle. I am going to trace out all my holes so that we know where to cut so we don't go too far. As long as we have some meat here for the screws to grab on, there's six of them, it will be fine. Since all I have is a really tiny skill saw right now, because my jigsaw is in storage, I'm going to go see if I can even cut this at all. Well, you can see about how that went. Wish I could find my jigsaw, but anyway, got a little thing cut. It'll fit in there. Toe lights will help keep it nice and tight. Then we'll put our screw holes in. Okay guys, I thought for sure I had black Tolex in stock. This this is what happens. So I couldn't find my black Tolex, so I found this blue. I was like, okay, we'll make the blue work. Inside my blue here, watch. <laughs> Apparently, I stuck the black. So we'll go with black. That's just hilarious to me. Unless it's not enough. Let's see, let's see if we got enough. Let's make sure. Oh yeah, yeah, we're good. Okay, we're gonna go with the black. Make it look as nice as we can. Ignore where I clipped out the ends of the... Eh, it's fine. So Tolex is not the hardest thing in the world. It's not the most fun either. Always give yourself a little more than you think you're gonna need. And I can't stress enough how important a sharp blade is to doing a decent job on your toe legs. Keeping your coconut off your project is also of utmost importance. Also, I don't cut all the way to the edge. Here's what I do. <laughs> Look out, buddy. I don't cut all the way to the edge. Here's what I do. I poke a hole so that I can hold this tight and then I run my blade through. Just eyeballing, trying to make sure it's all relatively close to good. And then I cut the end there. Oh, I missed a spot here. Okie dokie. Now what you do, clean off, which in this case, this is gonna be the face that we need to glue. So we need to clean this off really well first. Now I 
have a lot of people will use some kind of crazy hardcore thing. I don't see the reason. Dust it off real well. I use a little bit of Windex. I don't spray onto the thing. This will just get the leftover dust. And the Windex dries super quick. So give it like seven or eight minutes. It'll be dry and you can glue that. Now your inside of the toe should be pretty clean, but because I have a coconut, he immediately laid on it. So we're gonna <laughs> dust it off as best we can. Get them little cat hairs and pieces of wood out the way. I may roll this the other direction to try to get it to quit rolling up on me there. Obviously there's gonna be overspray, so cover your area that you don't want glue on. Also do this outside, don't be an idiot like me. Important thing is to let it sit for about 20 minutes, and then take your wood. I've also sanded the edges so that they don't get ripped, like the Tolex doesn't rip when you go over them, so they're rounded over a little bit. All right, you gotta let that sit. Um, also, you have to spray the underside where you're gonna wrap your tow legs as well. Let me show you how to do that. First off, make sure you stick to whatever you're working on. Everything becomes sticky, just to let you know. Don't have to do a lot because it's gonna be stapled as well on the inside here. And then just take something like a drill bit. Leave it alone. Leave that alone for like 20 minutes. Come back, stick them together. So while our glue is drying, I thought I would take a look at our speakers here and show you guys what we're working with. These are some vintage Hepner organ speakers. I won an auction at a local old school music house, Reynolds Music, I believe it was, seven, eight years ago. I've never used these speakers. I've been wanting to, never done it. I don't have a cab with Alnico's in it. These are old Alnico's. So let's see what the resistance value is here. Let's check our ohm reading. All right, about 16. And the same. So really this is like 14.7, this is like 15.1. But that means they're still in good shape. So that is awesome. So when we put these together, we'll have an eight ohm cab, not bad, right? Uh, 32 ohms or eight, but we're gonna run this as eight. And it's kind of cool that it comes with a little, these little things already, so I can just connect them through there. Yeah, that's going to be awesome. Obviously, I don't know the watts of these, but I don't plan on giving this cab ever more than, say, between 30 and 50 watts, so it should be fine. I thought you guys might get a kick out of this. So we have one cone that is ribbed for our pleasure, has a little vent there in the middle, and then another cone, no vent, smooth. Interesting. I'm sure they chose these two together for the sonic properties and they both have the same sort of corking around the edge there. So they do have the same uh, maker mark on the back. I looked the numbers up, but they do have different little uh, batch numbers. So yeah, two different types of vintage organ speaker. That's kind of cool. Okay, our Tolex has had enough time to dry, I believe. You don't want it to be totally dry, but the point is leave it just slightly tacky enough so that these guys stick together and then they'll have a really good bond. Try to center it as best you can. Sometimes it is best to smooth out as you go. Lots of pressure. You can do this with a roller too. That'll be a way better result. Lots of pressure pulling that out. All right, flip her over. Everybody does their corners differently. Here's how we're doing these. You can just cut straight out from the edge. I'll leave about a half inch, maybe a little less on the inside of the cuts. Pull it tight over the edge, around the corner. Squish her down like 
like that. Remember we glued around the edges. Same thing here, pull it tight around the edge. You can cut off the excess on the inside of the one you just pulled over. At any rate, once you get it pulled inside, you can then cut it at a diagonal. Take that out, open her up, peel the inside piece out, and then fit them together like so. Get you a nice corner there. I am not an authority on Tolex at all. I suck, okay? Just letting you guys know. I can't let that dry too much. That's okay. We're going to staple anyway. There's a channel called Uncle Doug if you want to learn how to Tolex the best possible way. That guy is amazing. Everything he does, love his channel. Uncle Doug, you can find him on YouTube. Not really my uncle. All right. Then uh, we have our opening here. We can just cut across. And we can just pull these in and staple these like so. That'll be enough to hold her, probably. Let's put my jack together. So the only soldering we actually have to do, soldering, soldering, is on our little tabs here for our plate because the wires I just pulled from that crate amp and they have little alligator crimps or not alligator crimps they have little crimps on them so that we can connect the uh, speakers and obviously the speakers have the internal connection this should be all we have to solder just getting everything tinned if you leave a little blob of solder on the end of your iron, leave it tinned as they say, transfers the heat to the wires much faster. So we have to pay attention to how we're putting this in. So this is your ground tab, that's your positive tab. Your positive tab goes to that. So this has a white and black and a black. So we want to put our white and black on the positive tab. Just because that's the way I want to do it. Okay, so I know this is going to be a little dark, so sorry about that, but we want our positive wire going to one speaker. Basically, we're going positive to positive and negative to negative on each speaker. And yes, both of these are going to be connected. So what we'll, we'll end up with is we'll be running this setup in parallel, and if we plug another speaker cab into it, another 8 ohm cab, We'll be running that in parallel as well. But what you don't want to do is plug into both jacks from two different amps at one time or from uh, the same amp at one time thinking it's a stereo cab because it's not. So we will clearly label this cab so that in a year or so I don't forget what the heck I did. <laughs> oh, we got to put our little insert in before I close this up totally. This insert is just going to be like a friction fit for now. I remember cutting it tight enough to be that. 
definitely tight enough. Probably too tight. Right, let's set this here. That is really like evenly seated. I'm very pleased with that. Could it be a little bit, a little bit thicker on the bottom? Sure. That's not bad. Got some holes to drill. Well, here she is, guys. Our Alnico speaker laden crate 212. Got our little maple insert here. Probably should have trimmed some of that vinyl off there a little bit, but uh, that thing worked out great. It's seated really tightly. I do want to do something else with this trim because I'd like to bring it up around the edges of that. I think that would look cool, but uh, pretty happy with it. So now we just got to hear what it sounds like after I make sure the ohms read around eight like they should. Just a little bit, you know, neurotic about that kind of thing, I guess. Anyway, let's uh, hear how she sounds. So yeah, I'm really digging this thing, guys. It's got surprisingly good bass for being such a narrow 212, but it's not uh, super flubby, flubby bass or anything either, which is cool. I'm not trying to push a lot of high gain intensity into it. I'm just running my little 25 watt PV Bravo. Clean sound freaking amazing through this thing. Like I really like the clean tone. Uh, obviously something with gain more my style. This This thing gets gnarly, but it's it's not my exact kind of feel to the way I like my gain, but it's just a really fun little cab. I'm stoked on it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, know that you can go make your own sweet little 2x12 or 1x12 or whatever you want to make. Pretty cool. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you next time.